Question 1. Consider the following circuit. You've got three identical light bulbs. What will happen to the brightness in lamp 2 when you close this switch? When you put resistors in parallel with each other, the overall resistance decreases. You can prove this mathematically. So if we put these two suddenly, we close this, then what you have is a lamp 1, which is in series with two resistors or two lamps in parallel. This overall resistance will decrease. Now voltage, which is the amount of energy coming off the lamp, voltage is proportional to resistance, V equals IR. So if you reduce this overall resistance, then the voltage across here will reduce. And more resist or more voltage, sorry, will go across lamp one. Okay, so what will happen is less voltage across this area, and because there's less voltage, there's less brightness. Okay, let me sum that up. Voltage is proportional to resistance. The more resistance, the more voltage. And voltage tells you how bright something is. The higher the voltage, the brighter the lamp. So by Putting these two lamps in parallel, you are reducing the overall resistance. Because you're reducing the overall resistance, you're reducing the overall voltage. And so therefore, the brightness decreases. Now this is a scary looking question, but focus on the facts. We have a circuit which has a bunch of voltmeters, VM1 and VM2 and a bunch of ammeters, AM1 and AM2, connected. Which of the four devices is not properly connected? Voltmeters are always in parallel. They're always in parallel to the thing that they're analysing. And ammeters are always in series. They have to be in series with something. So let's have a look at which of these is not. This voltmeter, oh, let's have a look, VM2, is in parallel with this resistor. So I guess what you're looking at here is the voltage across this resistor. AM1 is not in series with anything really. It's in parallel with this one. And I guess it's, it's not in series with this one actually because you're completely ignoring the rest of the circuit, right? So this one should be connected here in order to measure the current in this part of the circuit. So already we can see that AM1 is in, the, is in the wrong, right? This voltmeter here is in parallel with this resistor, right? So this is fine. And this ammeter, ammeter 2, is in series with this part of the circuit. So ammeter 2 is correct. The incorrect one is ammeter 1. Question 5. In the circuit below, the cell has an EMF of 16 volts and negligible internal resistance. What is the, cus the current passing through one of the two ohm resistors? Now, when you look at this circuit, the first thing to notice is that the two resistors here are the same, right? Which means that the current, as it flows through the circuit, will split evenly, which is nice because it means that if you can work out the current here, you can split it into two, just divide by two, and then you can easily work out the current here and here. So how do we do that? How do we find the current in the main part of the circuit? Well, for that, you need to work out the total resistance. Work out the resistance of these two in total, and then this is your voltage. You can use voltage over current equals resistance to find the current. Now, how do we find the total resistance? You could use 1 over R T equals 1 over R plus 1 over R. But the rule is very quick to apply. If you have two resistors that are the same, the total resistance is half of it. So this resistance is 1 ohm. Right. Now 1 ohm plus 3 ohms is 4 ohms. So the total resistance of the circuit is 4 ohms. And now we have 16 volts. If I just have a look, 
current equals voltage over resistance. So 16 divided by 4 is 4 amps. 16 divided by 4, right? And if we go back to the circuit, if you've got 4 amps going here, then it splits into 2. You've got 2 that way and 2 that way. So it's 2 amps each. Here we have a resistivity question. The resistivity of copper is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7. The current through the amp is 2 amps. So they're not giving you resistance, they're giving you current. The potential difference is 8. What is the radius of the wire? Give your answer in micrometers without units and to two significant figures. Now this is a simple question using the resistivity formula, but they don't give you resistance. So you find the resistance first, using the voltage and the current given, and there you have a resistance of four. The chances are that you have used this equation correctly, but then have not been able to uh, find the answer in micrometers, okay? So this is all you have to do. When you have to convert to something like micrometers, first look up what micrometers means. It means times 10 to the minus six, right? So what you do is you divide your value 7.8 times 10 to the minus 6, divide it by micro, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6, right? So 7.8 times 10 to the minus 5, divide it by 1 point, um, sorry, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 will give you 78. And that's how you convert quickly. Please come and find me if that wasn't the mistake you made. Another circuit question, question 8. This one's different to the previous one in that the resistance of these two is not the same. However, the voltage across here is going to be the same as the voltage across here. So that's an important value. Why? Because the voltage in series splits. So let's have a look at the question. We've got V equals 100 volts. R is 100 ohms. So this would be 200 and that would be 100. Determine the current through the 2 ohm resistor. Right, there are a number of ways to do this. The first one would be, or one of the one of the most straightforward ways, I think, would be to find the current going through this resistor. Because if you can find the current going through this resistor, you can find the voltage across the resistor. And so if you know the voltage across this resistor, you can work out the voltage across these resistors. So off you go then, stop the video and try and find first what is the total resistance of these two together? So 2R in parallel with R, considering that R is 100. Work that out. Find the resistance of this. Now you should have found that this resistance is approximately 66.6, .6, right? So now find the total resistance, 66.6 .6 plus 100. So it's 166. That's your total. You have a voltage of 100 and a resistance of 166. So now find the current flowing through the main part of the circuit. Pause and find it. Now I hope you found that the current flowing up to here is 0 0.6. Now you can do two things now. You can use ratios or you can continue calculating. If you've got 0 0.6 amps here and you can see that this resistance is twice this resistance, then you could just use ratios. If the ratio is 2 to 1, then the current would be twice as much current here than here, right? So does that make sense? It's twice as difficult to flow through here, so therefore you would get twice the current flowing through here. So the ratio would be 0 0.6 here, and you would have 0 0.6 2 amps this way and 0.4 amps there. So that could be one way of solving it. If not, what you can do is this. 0.6 times 100, which is the resistance, right? 0.6 times 100 gives you 60 volts. That means that you've got 60 volts across here, and which means that you've got 40 volts across here. Now what is 40 volts divided by 200? Well, that would give you an answer of 0 0.2 amps. Okay, so you can calculate it or you can use ratios.
And that's pretty much all the questions that you had issues with. Please let me know if this explanation did not go far enough.